my brother. Three, four, what is up, man? Rashad Hassan. <laughs> That's good, bro. Now you got you gotta call me by my my government name. My, my government name, Deuce. What you talking about? I don't know Rashad Hassan, bro. Rashad, okay. No, uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm messing with you. I'm messing with you. I'm hey, messing with you. I still, you know, when you say Deuce, bro, it just brings back the day. Deuce was created. <laughs> <laughs> I still remember the We're day. We're going to say that for another time. We're going to say that. <laughs> but you feel me? We in the building. For everybody tuning in, this is a, a Tab Show Live podcast. Also, the, the Autumn Thoughts uh, podcast. You know what I mean? It's my brother from Savannah State. We've been knowing each other, what? 13? What's going on? 13 strong years. Bro. 2008. Yeah, 2008. Yeah, bro. 13, 14 strong years, bro. It's that long time. time Lot of relationships don't last that long, bro. Even as friends, yeah. over, they don't last that long, bro. How about to say, yeah, bro. We've been solid since day one, man. Yeah. And I'm just glad we, you know, still growing up in this whole life process, still, you know, learning, getting better at, you know, being basketball players, fathers, yeah, and, you know, social media content creators. So, Oh, yeah, it is. It's always good to see. You know, they be like it's good to see like the person you you started with when y'all was just kids, pretty much, and y'all kind of grow up like, yeah, he been my friend for twenty some years, this, that, and the third, and then most of the time it don't never really work out like that. Something always happened. You gotta even think about it. Like you know, my personal situation with some of my family members that you would never think y'all would have a falling out, and it'd be. When you have somebody that you rock with and they really rock with you and you use you can watch their growth and y'all grow together, bro, that's just a blessing. You know what I'm saying? The older you get, the more you appreciate it. We just getting started, like you say, bro. We just getting started. For real, for real. Just getting started. 2022 year. Two, I can't talk. Just getting started. 2022 has been a great year. You know what I mean? Uh 2023, right around the corner. We gotta turn up even more. And uh, like I said, man, shout out to Savannah State, the best HBCU shout in out the HBCU. world. Facts. I should have wore HB. I should have wore Savannah State John shirt. <laughs> you showed them love. I, I still got a, I still got a couple of mine hanging around the house. Got some some classic throwbacks and stuff. Facts, man. I gotta go back again. See yeah, all that. See missing us. Yeah, he definitely missing us. We missing him too, though, man. Yeah, I love his wisdom. And I'll, overall, he's a he's a funny ass dude. We're going to get started. Yeah, so, so. We're going to get started. He gave me some laughs I ain't man. never going to forget about, bro. <laughs> he gave me some laughs I ain't never going to forget about. Boom, man, what up, my boy? Best point guard in the BBL. But yeah, bro. Broadness was no joke. We already know. Big facts. Big facts. Yeah, right man. So you over in Argentina, for the people that don't know, my boy 3-4 is a professional basketball player as well. He's, you know, he, he's slightly, you know, behind me in skill, but, you know, he, he make up for it with his, all his energy and hustle <laughs> play, and he got, a, he got a high IQ, so, you know what I mean? It's like, he make up for it in, in that way, but now, nah, he a dog, he, got, he definitely was born with that dog in him, and uh, how the season going so far in Argentina, bro? Uh, so far, the season has been going pretty good since I arrived, I've been here for... Let's see, I've been here for a little over a month. Uh, I came in, like, when the team was already going. We've won, like, five, I'm 5-2 five and two since I've arrived. I'm 5-2 and two since I arrived. So, you know, I'm just trying to bring just winning mentality to everybody. You know, any team that I step on, I'm, it's got to be winning mentality. We got to be, we got to be thinking about championship. Like, when I got on the court first week, I established, I'm like, listen, we're not talking, we're not saying the team name, just a little breakdown. We're saying championship right now. We got to get it. We got to change our mindset. We got to let y'all know, like, this is what we're about. This is what, this is the standard. You know, that's that's just my how my approach to everything that I acquire in the game and up until this point in my career. I've only known high level. You know, and we can go back to Broadnax because he always wanted to push us to that high level. You got to push us to, you know, you got to set the standard for yourself. What do you want? Mm -hmm. And what do you what do you bring to the table? What's up, guys? 
I just dropped my new ebook, Six Must Have Steps to Be an Overseas Basketball Player. You know, I've been playing for the last nine years. I got all the steps and the traits that you need to start your journey. Networking, mentor, all the things that you need to start your journey to be a pro today. So go get that ebook, click the link in the bio, and make sure you can just step to being that overseas pro one day. Let's go. You know, and so. We are in Rio Gachel. My team, my team name is Hispania Americano, and it's in Rio Gachel, and it's like at literally the bottom of the earth. You hear me? Like we right by in Antarctica. Like we down here. Yeah, I, I was about to say I didn't realize how how close I was to Antarctica until I played in Uruguay that one time, and I was like, hold up, let me see where I am on the map, because you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. I, I, Never had flew to South America before I got a contract to go play out there. And I just remember, I thought of that idea when I was watching the playoffs. It was like uh, Miami Heat. It was Dwayne Wade last season, and he was going against the, the Charlotte Hornets. He was going crazy that year. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, I was like, it was, um, I want to say it was wintertime when I was out there. Mm -hmm. And it tripped me out because you know how, like, the the weather, the, the climates in the summer, the, what's the word? The seasons change yeah. when you change, like, uh, hemispheres. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I was out there, I was like, bro, I didn't expect, I knew it was wintertime, but I didn't expect it to be freezing because you think South America, you think about the rainforest in Brazil, and you right. just think it's hot all the time out there, but it get cold as on the wood. Yeah, right now it's summertime. It perfect, like, but... For the rest of the world, it's, it's, it's um, Christmas, and it's normally cold. Right now it's actually the summertime. And you got to think about it, like, our summertime. It's it's crazy, though, because 5 o'clock in the morning, the sun be, like, midday. Like, it's bright, you know? And it don't mm -hmm. get dark till like, 1030. Yeah, and it's prime summer, but you're waking up and it's 33 degrees outside. <laughs> That's summertime, you know? So, yeah, that's... What? That's that's bad. That's that's the um adjustments you have to just make as far as being a pro, you know, because a lot of a lot of athletes they don't understand that aspect of the game. That you know what I got to change my mentality to actually deal with the climate and the weather to adjust to play. I'm from Florida. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. summertime. It's seventy. It don't get no lower than seventy five degrees every day, and now I got to play. Where it gets below zero, and you're at the. When I say the bottom of the earth, I really mean the bottom of the earth. Go look it up on the map. Like we're really at the bottom of the earth, but you know, I I've been through this. And I'm to the point I really feel like in my life that I've cultivated a mindset just to be able to adjust and adapt to anything. You have to. You have to. You have right. to be able to be able to adapt if you say you want to play basketball overseas. You're overseas. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you're not at the crib. Like you're going into, like you said, different different hemispheres and stuff like that, mm -hmm. and different environments. And being able mm -hmm. to adapt and adjust is one of the main aspects to being a pro. One to being a pro. Period. So yeah, like the team, we're doing good. We're getting better. We're definitely getting better. We won our last game. We had a game yesterday. We won by a dub. Mm -hmm. You know, so that was the last game of the year. That's always great to finish out this year with, with a dub. You know, that's just going to lead into the next season, our next part of the season. And like I said, bro, I just wanted to bring a winning mindset. Like, this championship. That's all it is. That's what it's always about. We got to get this dub. Nah, I feel you, bro. Congrats on the, getting that last win of uh... – 2022 as the year Deuce Deuce. Deuce Deuce, yeah. <laughs> uh, the greatest years of oh, all time. I want to say this. I want to say this. I want to chime in on this. It's so crazy. The year of Deuce Deuce. Shout out to the year of Deuce Deuce. My very first episode ever, ever video, ever podcast was a shout out to you. Year of Deuce Deuce 2022. That Let's was go. crazy. <laughs> That, that was my first go, ever man. video. It was paying homage to you, my boy. Straight up, paying homage to you. Likewise, that's why I'm on this podcast with you. I got the same mutual respect, man, admiration for you, my boy. We're going to 
we're gonna help each other get to the level where we want to be, bro. We've been doing that since yeah. the beginning, and I ain't gonna stop. You know what I mean? So big facts, bro. That's big why you're on this podcast today, my boy, and I appreciate you, man. Real talk, bro. real talk, bro. So you know, you're off to a good start in Argentina. Glad to hear that. Um, we definitely won our last game too, and I remember 2021. Uh, I won. It was a scrimmage game, and it was a crazy scrimmage game because, like, I hit like. I don't want to say a buzzer beater, but like a get, go ahead bucket for us to win the game. Mm -hmm. And overall, that was like my first debut for this team I'm on now. Shout out to the Plymouth City Patriots. Shout out to all the Plymouth City Patriots fans, best fans in the whole British Basketball League. But yeah, uh, and since then it's been really just a fun process and a dream come true. Did you win your last game of last year? You remember? My last game of last year. I don't believe. I didn't start my season until the beginning of this year, like the third, okay. when I was playing in Chile. Mm -hmm. So we, I started off the year being able to like start the season off. Literally, it was like January 3rd we started the season. So I still remember. I remember we won our first game, and we did win the championship. That was my seventh championship that I won um, of my career. I'm highly grateful for that. And how, how many championships you won? Just for the people in the back, they ain't quite hear that. Just so people know, you know what I'm saying, your boy is past Jordan status. I'm on number seven. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about all that. One, but, all right. In my like own, like in my comment. own world, I am in my own status, you know. But I am on number seven. I'm seven. I'm seven and zero oh in eight years with six different teams. You know, I'm just creating my own legacy, becoming a legend in my own world, and just creating I'm just trying to be like you when I grow up, bro. That's that's legendary. I'm just trying to be like you when I grow up, bro. Hey, man, you part of Grand Me and T, man. It's in you, too, man. Got greatness is in you, too. Seven, seven. Sure. What do you sure. say? Yeah, man. Rashad and Haka. Sure. I be on. I be on, dudes. Bro, I need a chip. You can't be, we can't be hanging out and you talking about you ain't got no championships, bro. You, you hey, know what I'm saying? All I got to say, all I got to say, especially for all the Plymouth Patriots fans on this live, we getting one. We getting a championship. Speaking into existence, this year, man. We, we getting a championship this year. That's what I meant to say to you earlier. Like, you were talking about speaking into existence. Mm -hmm. And just the other day, we were talking about books. And we talk about the four agreements books, and we talk about being impeccable with your words. Being impeccable and with your words. It's it's the truth, bro. The word is powerful, bro. Yeah. Whatever you speak, whatever you say, can actually manifest and happen. So, you know, like you said, you you went to that team. They and then y'all break it down one two three team. You was like, nah. You being a leader. You being a veteran. You like, nah. We gotta have a higher mindset. Right. You talking about champion. So when y'all do go and become champions, ain't no surprise. Ain't no surprise. Because you spoke into existence and you believed it. Right. So like, yeah, man. For everybody on the live too, man, go go read some books, go educate yourself. I recommend the uh, the four agreements. The four, great, yeah, great book. The four agreements of life. Like I pre I actually had that, wrote that down to talk about that, that four agreements, because you put me on that. And I read yeah, yeah. once you said it to me, I read it twice. <laughs> like after I read it, I read it again right after, and I'm yeah. like, nah, this is one of those books for sure. The Four Agreements of Life. They definitely that being impeccable with your words it just reinforces everything. And like you gotta be, you gotta be mindful for what you're saying, what you're speaking. Right. You know, we use the we use the word too loosely, too, too much. loosely. We take, man. A, we take words that we say to not only ourselves but to other people. Too too lightly. Too, we take it for granted too much. Words are powerful, man. Yeah, powerful beyond measure. Very yeah. powerful, man. I really and I really feel that. I teach that and I incorporate that with my, you know, with my daughter. I told her that. I started telling her that you know your words are impeccable. You gotta make sure what you're speaking, you know, are words that give you strength that you believe in that have made make you better. You know, and ever since I read those to that book, I read it twice. I've been using it like almost in every aspect in my life. Don't take it personal. You know, uh, do your best. That's all you can do. Do your best. Just sometimes we get so caught up in like, man, did I do enough? Did I do this? Just do your best. Yeah. Enjoy. Just exactly. enjoy. Enjoy all this, bro. Just enjoy. Enjoy the best. Sometimes, and then, like you said in the book, like sometimes your best ain't going to be up here. Right. Sometimes it's going to be up here. Depending on 
how you feeling, depending on what's going on in your life. But like you said, as long as you're doing your best, bro, then you ain't got nothing to hang your head about, nothing to, nothing to feel bad about. Everything is all good, you know what I mean? Big facts on that one, bro. Big facts on that one. I really, like you said, go, go pick up some books. Books is literally the opening is the key to unlocking everything. And I'm glad you start picking mm -hmm. up some book. I'm glad you recommended me a book. <laughs> yes, yes. I get to get so you. People that need motivation into reading books. I'm not a book reader. I was never <laughs> into books. But I just said something in my life got to change, man. I'm right. trying to get to somewhere that I've never been before. And they say the definition of insanity is doing yeah, the same, same thing, thing over and over. And, over. and, and expecting, expecting a different, different result. So, <laughs> Shout out, out Coach Broadnet. What's in my life? I got to do something different. So, shout out Coach Broadnet. I got to pick up. Yeah, shout out to Coach Broadnet for real because he the main one that drilled that hey. in my head. But, yeah, I, I definitely had to pick up a book this year, man, for sure. And it's it definitely been beneficial. Came mm -hmm. out. Came out. Yeah. But with that being said, though, you know, like I said, uh, you in Argentina and uh, the World Cup is going on. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? And uh, it just so happened that Argentina has made it to the final of the World Cup. They play Sunday, and I think they go against France. Listen, so it's going to be a good one. How, how is that? It's going to be mayhem here, bro. When I say I mayhem. Say how, 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 is that? how is the atmosphere? How is the vibes in, in Argentina right now? <laughs> it's, it's the okay. Like, being from the States, you see how people get for, like, football – and Super Bowl and like baseball, it's nothing like when you're in a country where it's not just a state, you know, they're self supporting their team. The whole country is supporting something. Like, I'm not no soccer fan, I only watch it just to be interactive with my teammates and stuff. But like, they will shut down, ain't no games going on. If we got a basketball game, it's getting rescheduled. <laughs> like, ain't nothing going on. And they're winning. And they're mo oh my goodness, Rashad. I went to go get something to eat inside the restaurant. They was like, what? Restaurant's closed. I'm like, this is a time. <laughs> the city is dead. You hear me? The city is dead. Ain't nobody outside. Everybody's watching the World Cup. Everybody's just like so in tune. When I was doing some work, I think the last game they played, I actually fell asleep. I was doing some work, and I fell asleep. And I just heard just, like, loud bangs. And I'm like, what, what, what's going on, bro? They had one city was on fire. I did a video on my um, – I put it on my other page and just recorded. Man, the city was just on fire. Everybody in the streets. And I'm not talking for, like, 30 minutes, everybody hype. I'm talking about from like 7 to 2 in the morning. Horns, <laughs> horns blazing. People up in the It's crazy. Like, they really take this thing so serious. Like, that's all this. That soccer. I ain't gonna lie. Messi's mm -hmm. messy fire. I ain't gonna hold you. Like, he really. I was just about to say, and not only like they made it to the final, but y'all, Argentina got like one of the GOATs, the greatest yeah. of all time. If yeah. not, the greatest of all time, nah, you know what I mean? Messi's. So it's like, and I, you know, we don't know how much long he's going to do this thing for. So I know the country, they definitely in a frenzy oh, right now. I can only imagine what they're right. I am glad I'm here. Uh, Yo. Yeah, because I'm in, I'm, in, I'm in England, and this is a, a big football slash <laughs> soccer country. <laughs> right. too, you know what I mean? It's so weird for me to say football. I, I so we're going to say, say the whole world calls it weird. football. I, I, call I love that USA chant. I don't know if you heard it, but that USA chant was like, it's called soccer. Oh. <laughs> it's nah, called soccer. I like that, though. <laughs> I like yeah, that. I like that one. I like that one. <laughs> but now, nah, uh, what I'm about to say, like, nah, it's, it's, just, it's a blessing that you're in a different country, and that's one of the beauties mm -hmm. of, like, this job, you know what I mean? Like, because, uh, like I said, I, I'm over in England, and then last year, um, it was the Euro Euro final, so, like, basically all the European teams compete and, like, uh, see who wins, you know, uh, the football championship for Europe. Right. And England had made it to the final. Oof. Uh, yeah, they made it to the final. And I remember going – to the semifinal game, uh, and they play against Denmark, bro. 
And you know, out here, pubs, it's like bars. We got bars back in the States, but pubs out here are like mm -hmm. the main place where people get messed up, have a good time, get drunk, <laughs> get drunk and have some drinks and stuff. So I definitely wanted to go into a pub and get that that British, that experience English vibe and bro. It was just lit, bro. Like, you know, like you said, you're not even a fan of soccer. Yeah. Right. Just being around the people, Man. just hear people go crazy, just like, you know what I mean? The whole shebang, the whole atmosphere, the whole combination of everything. It was just like, damn, bro, it's pretty lit, bro. I, I like this, man. Like, okay, so like we're done. We're pretty much done for the rest of like the, the team. Everybody goes on a break. Like we're done. We got probably got like two or three more practices, and then everybody goes on like the Christmas break. But there's like a spot here in the city. I saw it in the newspaper, like where everybody goes and they put it like on a big jumbotron where they're watching the game. I'm going. <laughs> you feel me? <laughs> I'm going because, like you say, mm -hmm. bro, you don't understand the experience of the whole country behind one thing. Uh, like uh, that is just, it's just a different type of feeling and different types of vibe because it's like now everybody's on one accord. Everybody's cheering for one thing. No matter what city you go into, it don't matter where at, everybody is on one court, accord and they're all just rooting for the same thing, which is kind of, mm -hmm. it's a good thing for them, but it's kind of like messed up for us. It just shows the separation from America because like the only time we ever get on something that's trying to get on one accord is when something negative happens. Somebody get shot. Mm -hmm. Somebody's trying to make, you know what I'm saying? The World Trade Center, now the whole world is trying to be together. Like, when are we going to find something that brings us together to just be happy and joyful and support? You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. it, that's the cultural that, differences. That's, um, nah, you're right. Nah, that's, that's, that's really the beauty of sports and the whole, like, what the beauty of the whole World Cup doing is, like, is bringing people, like, not only in their country together and, like, Making it, making people realize like we all just want it, you know what I mean? Right, we, need to tell our we need to stop stop worrying about all this petty stuff we worry about, and you know what I mean? It's just like, uh, yeah, it's we we just do much more when we unify and team up together. That's a great feeling, and bro. We just, we just achieve a lot more as a human race when we just stop saying like, I don't care about your skin tone, I don't care about you not having the same belief system as me, let's find a common ground. Let's see beyond that. You know what I mean? Let's work together because, you know, it's a bigger purpose than what I feel is right and what you feel is right. You know what I mean? We, we, we can have a common we can have a common ground, bro. We, there's always a common ground. That's why it's called common ground. Yeah. <laughs> we all yeah. can find that do it, but we just choose not to. And it is good to find mm -hmm. the go, you know, sometimes to just get that separation sometimes. Like, as much as I love the States and I love being at the crib, you want to get away from all that negativity sometimes. It's good to sometimes mm -hmm. just be walking down the street and you just see everybody cheering and happy. And, like, people just look at you different. They don't even know you. Hey, can I take a picture with you? You just look, you know what I'm saying? You're different, you know? I never get that at the States. I never. They would never come up to me like, hey, you look like you do something very beneficial. Can I take a picture with you? I don't know who you are. <laughs> you know, but I feel like I should take a picture of you. You just look like an all right guy. Oh, sure, of course. I love that. You know? Nah, I was, that was another part in like the book, I, another one of my books I read, and they were just saying how beneficial travel can be. You know what I mean? And like you said, like, we fortunate to like play in different countries, not just in one country, but we might go to one continent, then go to the next continent. So we've seen so many cultures, and of course, all the cultures aren't the same as that, how it is in America, but mm -hmm. they still get along yeah. and they function just fine. So it kind of lets you know, like you can live many different ways and, and harmonize and be yeah. at peace with each other. So it's like, but the thing about the states is just like sometimes we so far shut off from other cultures and what other the the rest of the world doing that it could be a negative thing for us. You know what I mean? It is, like, man. I almost like... every basketball player that I met that hooped overseas, they always have an adjustment coming from the States to where we could be, whether it be like Luxembourg in Europe or Uruguay in South America or even like an English speaking country like England and Australia is still an adjustment. 
Mm-hmm. And it's just because, like, I just say it's just tough for Americans because we just show, so shut off. Like, I remember growing up, I can, I mean, we growing, learned about different countries in, in history class and geography. And I'm like, bro, I'm never going there. <laughs> and I probably would never relate to them. Why are we learning about this? You know what I mean? And, like, I'm thankful I learned about it now, but oh, at the time, it just ain't make sense to me. But I don't know. America, we got some. We got to change our ways. Yeah, we got to change our ways, bro. Because I actually did an interview with one of my old friends before that. He was the, he was the guy that um, he actually got nine championships. He had just won his ninth. We did an interview. Y'all go check that out on my page, Arnold Starts Podcast. It's called Goat Talk. With my boy Jonathan Rodriguez, and then I asked him, I was like, "If you could give like some advice to, you know, athletes or whoever want to start the game, and that's what he said: being able to adjust. You got to be able to adjust to the new situations and new teams and countries that you go to. They're not going to adjust to you. You got to learn to adjust to them because this is they're from here. This is all they know, and us as Americans, we." have or english speaking country we have the hardest time adjusting we just think that i'm king tut like y'all supposed to bow down to me mm-hmm. and what i'm like no that's not how do you tell somebody that you're talking about exactly centuries of culture the people being a certain way and you're just gonna come in here and just act like i'm better than you and i'm gonna just come up here i'm gonna come in your house and kick your things over put my feet up <laughs> <laughs> Do that to your spouse, like to your place. Like you can't have that type of mindset. You gotta have an open mindset and just change the way you think and learn to just be a chameleon and just adjust to everything. Just break we gotta break free of that that open that closed mindset. It'll just it's a better life. Just it just really is a better life. Like you were saying, I remember you talked about that on a uh, a podcast we did a couple couple weeks ago, like saying like uh, just how you got to be successful to playing overseas, and then I think I think I answered with like your biggest one, you got to adjust, man, because mm. and not only that, you got to adjust quickly, quick, because you know, <laughs> yeah, they don't do things the same way as we, as we do in states, but hey, what you gonna do? It is what it is. We we win their country. And then on top of that, it's like, you know, they ain't got the same food, you know. Yes, we uh, are. Yeah. Oh, the whole demographic is just, just different, you know what I mean? But if you really love the game and if you really try to, like, continue, you know, being a basketball player for a long time, you best adjust. Because if you don't, they going to send you home. You're going to be on and, quick. And you don't want to have that yeah. situation. Like, we got a new guy that just came to our team, right? Um. Mm-hmm. He been on the team before, and one of the things the coach asked them was like, "Hey, why did you get cut from the last team?" This was like over a year ago, and he was like, "Bro, I didn't even get cut. I had like a shoulder injury that I had to leave." But it just goes to show like how hard it is, and how just one thing can come back around, and they're questioning you about it from a year ago, from a situation that you didn't even have any control of. So for the younger guys who can't adjust and then you get cut, well, he really couldn't adjust to here, you know. If this this guy was lucky, he was an MVP of the league before in this league in the first division. So he got pulled. And he played for the team for two years, so he got pulled. But if you're a new team, a new athlete, a new player trying to come in, you're in your first and second year in, why did you leave the team? What happened with that last situation? Oh, this no. You know what? We're not even going to waste our time with this, that, and the third. And that's a real thing. Mm-hmm. You got to really, like I said, for, like for me, that happened with me with a job. I had a job. Good one. They asked me something from eight years ago. I didn't get a job from eight years ago that I, I had nothing to do with it. I, I'm not even going to say that. I'm going to take full accountability for everything that happened to me. If I did, it didn't happen, it didn't happen. But they still bring that up. And if I didn't have one, you know what I'm saying, I had such a great resume and worked so hard to keep my resume up to par, that can be to make a break from you even making it or getting another job in the future. So that's really something yeah. to take into account. 
Facts. Facts. Big facts. And, you know, we talked about Justin. And, you know, you said you're over in Argentina. What's it like playing in a country with a language barrier? I am... Okay, like in my book, yeah, y'all go pick up my book. Six must have traits to become yeah, an overseas basketball right. player. That ain't one more time, bro. I get you off. Six must have traits to become an overseas basketball player. Like I wrote this book. This go book. Go get that thing. Go get that. Go thing. get that. Go get that. Link is in my bio on both. I'm going to play. Go click it. Go cop that book if you really want to play this game of overseas basketball because. I really wrote that from the heart to really just because I want to give back and want people to understand like just a little bit of things that you need to do just to even just survive this game, you know, and language barrier is one of the things that I talk about, you know, getting a mentor like me and Deuces, y'all, we, we literally are assigning ourselves as y'all mentors to help y'all understand like language barrier. That's a real thing. You know, not being able to communicate with cats, that is a real thing. For me, I luckily, I had just, something in me just told me, hey, maybe you should start learning Spanish. Just, just, just start learning Spanish. So I picked up an app, Duolingo, and just started just learning Spanish, you know, just practicing it 10, 15 minutes a day. You'll be surprised how fast five years go by. And now you're fluent enough to speak mm -hmm. the language. And you'll be surprised how much further that gets you along in life, being able to communicate. Not even even just in this country, but like I be getting caught in the airport sometimes with just random people, and they just come up to me and just start speaking Spanish. I guess it's maybe because I got the blonde hair, they think I'm Dominican. I guess, I don't, <laughs> I don't know. I guess they think I'm a poppy. They think I'm a poppy or something like that. <laughs> but they get so they just come and it's just like I helped the lady get her past, like her situation with a fight because I just can speak the language. So not being able to speak, it takes you so much further. Like that disconnect from your teammates. Hey, I need to tell you something. I need you to communicate something to you, but I can't really communicate it to you. I can't go in the middle of the game and pull out Google Translate, read this, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And it just, that mm -hmm. language barrier is, because yeah, you got to think about it. What are we doing right now? We're communicating. Y'all listening through our communication, our, our ability to translate what we're talking to you guys so you can understand and fully grasp what we're saying. If you can't do that with the people that you're spending six, seven, eight months with, it's going to be a tough mm -hmm. time. Can't even order the food that you want to get. You can't explain, hey, I don't want the rice. I want the pasta with this. this. <laughs> you know, just that. And it, especially like for me, I'm vegan. So just to explain how I want to eat my food and the things that I need to eat properly, just being able to communicate that to them, because I don't know what it is. Uh, yeah, maybe it's in South America. I don't know what it is, but they don't know what vegan is. <laughs> you know, I mean, like, I mean, I mean, like a, a vegan. <laughs> you, don't, you don't see, you don't see vegan stuff out there. They have vegan stuff out here, but okay. If you go to the crib and you say vegan or plant based, yeah, uh, there's too many names. It's too, it's too many yeah, names. It is too many names. I don't yeah, eat meat. I'm tired of that. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't eat meat. I don't eat yeah. cheese. I don't eat eggs. I don't eat fish. I don't eat mm. chicken. So when I be like, um, vegano, I'm, I'm vegan, they be like, so you was a fish? No, I don't eat that. Chicken? <laughs> <laughs> it, it's happened so many times. <laughs> Chicken? No, I don't eat that. I don't want that. <laughs> Bring me a big thing of cheese on the side. I don't want the cheese, okay? Yo no quiero queso, por favor, no no quiero queso. Please don't bring me no cheese. Like their food will have cheese on the food that you're ordering because it's just so natural for them. But if I'm not able to communicate with that, I'll never eat what I'm I'm trying. It won't work. So that language barrier is off the court and on the court. Cause we don't even have a translator here. See what I'm saying? We don't even have a translator. So like the last the last dude on the team. And, and to be honest, like for you know, you know uh, basketball players that's 
knowing they probably not gonna go to the NBA and but still want to be pros, and they knowing they probably gonna have to take their talents overseas. They probably assuming that a lot of these teams gonna have translators. And let me say this: most of them do, but that's like Euro League, Euro Cup level. You know, you gotta be a not saying you gotta be a prime time player, but you gotta be able to get a contract to the point where you haven't translated. You won't even know that till you sign. But most of these teams in most countries where they don't speak English as a predominant language, they're not gonna have no translator for you. Listen. And the I'm best gonna... translator you're gonna get maybe is a, maybe is a team that teammate and they don't even do a good job right. of translating. Listen, I was in China. Now think about this. The guys in China was getting paid the minimum the minimum amount of money that was getting paid for a month in the second division was forty thousand dollars a month. All right, guy on the That's team. Not bad at all. Okay, one of the dudes on the team signed. He was only there a month and a half. He got one hundred and eighty thousand dollars for that month because it came That's from. Definitely not bad at all. <laughs> it came That's from the Euro League. It got cut. <laughs> you feel me? Because it came from the Euro League, and their translator was horrible. So you even when you go up in the ranks, you be thinking, oh, they're going to have all this tailor made for me. No, they're not, bro. They're not. It's not like that. And we're going to speak on the average player. We can't just think about everybody that makes it to the top leagues because a lot of those players, they play for years and then get to a certain status, you know, and get that. Because I didn't see, I didn't play with guys who made it to the league first round. Or was on the roster team and playing right here in one of these little countries, right here next to me on my team, on my team. So don't get it mm-hmm. twisted. Don't let that consume your mind as thinking that I'm just I'm coming from Texas and I'm automatically gonna be on this. No. You find yourself right here in Chile on a 2.5, 2K job just trying to keep keep your name afloat. Like let's just call it, let's be real. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's yeah. real, but that's fine. That's just the journey sometimes. But yeah. do what, what you can, what you can focus on is if you're prepared for it. And that's what right. one of my favorite motivational speakers, E.T., say, it's not what broke you that broke you, it's that you wasn't prepared to be broken. You never prepared for it. Gotta prepare, right. man. Gotta stay, gotta stay ready. Right. Nah, you you write about that a hundred percent. And then like with the language barrier, you said like, uh, for me, like I've been in a few countries where English is they predominantly speaking uh, language. And when you first come in and you don't speak that language, I think the area where you're gonna struggle at the most is just uh, communicating with your coach and your teammates because obviously that's what you're there for um, in the first place to play basketball. But like you said, when there's no translator and the best translator you got is somebody on the team and they can half-heartedly do it and then they got to practice alongside with you so they can't just be standing right along next to you, it's like it's it's, it's almost going to a point where it's going to force you to learn the language. <laughs> right. Force you, force you to try to because it's just going to be too confusing and too stressful. Your coach staring at you. How about great my How about <laughs> And then everybody looking at you crazy, like, why are you not doing what he said? I can't understand. I don't this, know what he said. I have no clue. You know what I mean? And then, like, because they've been doing it for so long, they don't care that you, this is your first year. They done had plenty of first right. year players. Like, this ain't nothing new to them. So they're like, well, if he don't, like we talked about, adjust to this situation quickly. If he can't understand my play calls, if he can't communicate with his teammates in an effective way, Send him home because we're going to get another one that can come out here and adjust quicker than he can. Right, because you got to think about it. I mean, you got you literally <clears> – <throat> you got to be attentive of it. You can't just wait for someone to, like, come and translate <clears> – <throat> excuse me, translate for you. You literally got to be like, okay, he speaks a little bit of English. He can translate for me. You come sit right here next to me. Or oh, I'm going to come sit. You're going to be my friend. I don't care what you got to say. You're going to say be my friend right here because – I need to understand what's going on. Mm-hmm. Even as when I came up being a younger player, I know I, I wasn't forward like that to just say, hey, man, you need to translate for me because I need to get this information. The last guy that was on our team, we went through whole film sessions 
and no one translated one word to him. Our film session, our pregame, no one's going to go translate nothing to him. And I'm looking at the guys that actually speak Spanish. Don't say nothing to him. I'm like, <laughs> and we're ready to go play against the top team. What are we doing here? What, what What's going on? You know, so that, that communication and language barrier is big. Don't wait for somebody. You take the first step. You know? Yeah. And, uh, you know, personally, I'm definitely proud of you because you definitely know how to speak Spanish. Like, I don't know. Are you, would you consider yourself, you fluent in Spanish now or are you about like 80% you know how to speak Spanish? You can understand it. I would say like, I'm, where you about, I'm about 70%. Because the, when you get into the technicals, that's where it gets a little bit tricky for me and yeah. then a little bit of the grammar. But I put it this way. You drop me in any Spanish-speaking country and I'm good. I don't care if it's an See, airport. That's, I that's don't care where it's at. Yeah. That's impressive, man. That, that means you spent your time wisely because, like, for me, my story is, like, um, I played two seasons in England uh, to start off my career. And most times off the court, once practice is over, I'm straight to the video game, watch social media, or take a, a eight hour a nap. You never know, <laughs> you know what I mean? But long story short, I didn't really get nothing out of this, you know what I mean? I'm just so happy I ain't have classes or no lectures to go to no more, you know what I mean? Because, bro, it used to be. I remember after the last day, you take a lot out of me going from a three hour basketball practice to a uh, uh, I was loving not having no classes. But long story short, after I left England, I went to Luxembourg. And out there, uh, because it's a tiny country and they in between like France, Germany, and uh, the Netherlands, and no, no, Belgium, they speak five di different countries. I mean, uh, five <laughs> different languages because. <laughs> I'm over here tweaking. They speak five different languages because they're in, they're so tiny and they're in between these countries that they all these countries commute through this country that they have to do it for business and to make a living. Mm -hmm. So it's like it's, it's beyond amazing. But still, when I was out there, it was a, it was a shock because that was my first country where they didn't speak English all the time. And I would go places and you know try to communicate with people in English, and either they were too embarrassed to speak in English. Because it might not, not might not have been that strong, or they just couldn't understand like my dialect, my oh, accent. Oh like, man! You know what I mean? So it's like they you speak English, but understand what I was saying. So it was beyond frustrating. Rashad, then, we're from the hood, you know, man. We're from the hood. We, we got an accent, exactly. man. <laughs> I I can't talk with that suburban American. West Coast. Hi, how are you guys? Doing? My name is Jimmy. I'm, I'm Hi, guys. Happy. I'm, I'm happy to meet you. How are you uh, doing today? How are you doing? Today? Yeah. <laughs> I can't do that, bro. I can't do it. And I'm, I'm kind of jealous of people who do sound like that because it's just easy. Uh, for them, but like you said, bro, I'm from the south side of Atlanta, bro. We don't talk like that where I'm from. So it is what it, it is. is. But it is. Yeah, bro. I got so frustrated to the point where, like, bro, I got to pick a language so these people can understand me and I can communicate properly. Because like you said, bro, they messing up your food orders. Your teammates don't know what you're talking about. Like, you just try to go in and just, I don't know, you're looking for something in the store. Can you find this? Huh? <laughs> can you find this? Huh? Like, bro, so yeah. For me, I picked up uh, speaking uh, French. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. You know, I just like... I was just like, no, nah, we had, uh, while I was there in Luxembourg, we had traveled to France. I went to Paris for the first time. And I just like, you know, kind of fell in love with the whole French culture and everything like that. So I was like, you know what, man? I'm tired of wasting my time at the practice. All I do is play the video games and watch NBA highlights. I got to be more productive. This around like 2015, 16. So I, I, I went to YouTube. I typed in how to speak French. And I'll never forget the, the teacher or the YouTube channel. It says learning French with Alexa, and I would do 10 minutes a day mm -hmm. just learning French. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out to Alexa. If she ever see this video, I know she probably won't, but thank you for teaching hey, me You never French. know. But you never know. You never know. But, yeah, man, she had a channel on YouTube, and then, yeah, she taught me about conjugations. So, so um, how good are you in French right now? Because I'm that's the language I'm learning right now. That's what I'm about to get to because, like, 
Also, later on that year, I picked up Duolingo, like you said. Mm -hmm. And it's so crazy. I was practicing for two years straight because after I left Luxembourg, I had sites and playing in France. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I wanted to right. work my way up maybe to the top top league out there. So by that time, it was like late 2017. And I was really pretty – I want to say I was probably about like maybe 20% fluent. But – that was way further than I ever was before in my life. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? I can understand it. I can finally catch on to the speed. I knew like 90% of the words. I didn't know how to put together like structured sentences, sentences mm -hmm. as good as I wanted to. But when I, when, I, when I heard people speak, I could, because I practiced so much, I could piece together what they said just through the words. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And I was like, wow, this is amazing. And then I ended, like, long story short, I only like, I was injured out there, so I only played three months in, in Paris. And since then, I kind of dropped uh, French. I don't know how to speak a lick of French no more. Aww. Except for, like, Parle Francais. I speak French. And, you know, Je m'appelle du. Je m'appelle. <laughs> I can still recognize words, though. 3 I was two years straight. Of, yeah. And I can, but I can still recognize words. And, like, when I see French, like, French, French instructions and stuff like that, I can still read, which is amazing. Just let you know that your mind is that powerful and that strong, like you know what I mean. Yeah, and like, bro. yeah, I'm on that. That's right one now. thing as a as a basketball player overseas. That's the skill you probably gonna have to pick up learning a different language. You should want to. You should want to pick just, that up. You know what I mean? Like it's it's and even even for your situation, like like you say, you should want to pick it up first and foremost. But then you know it helps you out with your team in basketball. But even when you go home. You know, the the there's a lot of Hispanics and a lot, a lot of Latin community in the states where we live, especially in you in Florida. And you know what I mean? You never know once we're done with our basketball career, what whatever type of job we work in. What other opportunities? A Latino boss or, you know, an opportunity where a lot of Latino person might be in a, in a place where they can put you where you want to be. And if you can speak Spanish, that's a plus. You know yeah. what I mean? So it's definitely, it's definitely beneficial and like I said, um, with America growing so much, bro, it's like, you know, they always been talking about it for the, like the past 15, 10 years. Like, like they're saying that the Hispanic popula I mean, uh, population is going to take over the minority. <laughs> and you can just see it. So many billboards with Spanish on them. So many commercials, like in normal English speaking channels, they play in Spanish. Though, right. so I'm, I'm translating my bills, book. Bro. I'm translating my book into Spanish. Straight up, it's getting translated into a Spanish version ASAP because a lot of people over here, a lot of my following, when I really think about it, a lot of my following or people are like fans are from Spanish speaking country. My daughter mm -hmm. is Colombian. Half of my family, the next, the like generation coming up, I'm, th I'm really thinking right now, I can count 15 of the kids coming up. They're all Latin mixed. 15 they're all latin mixed so they got like that latin in them that is definitely a new wave a new generation coming up and you definitely being able to speak a different language is definitely it just you want to grow as a person as well like i'm learning the friend like right now i have posted on my stories not too long ago it was like i was in the top one percent in duolingo i'm proud of that right there i'm in the top one percent for learners in the language, I and mean, it was French, and what I was learning because I just stay, I'm sticking to it, you know. So that'll be my third language that I'm gonna get, that I'm gonna learn. So you want to definitely do that for yourself. It's beneficial to you. You never know what door you can open up with that, for sure, absolutely. Right, and it's just, it's just amazing and fun to see how you can unlock certain things with your mind. Like your mind is so strong, and I don't think people. You know, especially the average person that just go about their day and just try to get through their the day. Average athlete. Understand, you can lot. You get average athlete. So many, you got a lot so much with your mind. And just all you got to do is push yourself, kind of get out your comfort zone, fail a little bit. And then once you go, go through that, man, the, the strength of your brain is beyond, beyond immeasurable, bro. It's, it's crazy, bro. I am a, a brain or <clears throat> mind like. I am obsessed 
<clears throat> with understanding the concepts of my mind at this point in my life. It's just so much untapped potential that we've just been letting slip and by because we just don't understand the power of our words and the power of our mind of what we can do, what we can overcome, what we can achieve mm -hmm. just through what we've been given, what's been given to us. And I am definitely, I feel like this year has just definitely been me unlocking my mind and understanding that I finally got the key to unlock my mind. And that's a question I was going to ask you, like what was, what has been one of the biggest or what has been like the, your biggest lesson you learned or what is the, like you've gotten out of 2022, like the one thing that has been like the turning point of this entire year that you could take from this year for me, it's just been, I finally start understanding my mind. I really start understanding the inner concepts of the mind as things it just opened up so much new just it's just that you took the i took the red pill i finally you know, i ate the red pill and i'm awake i'm awake mm -hmm. and it's like i'm a, like, obsessed with learning i'm obsessed with seeing like morpheus say how deep this rabbit hole can go and the deeper you get into it the more you want to go deeper because it's just it's a beautiful feeling, man. So what, what about you? Like, what would you take from this year? Like, it's two more weeks and this year is over with, bro. Would you get out of 2022? Yeah, that's crazy. That's, that's beyond crazy. But no, nah, I'm like you, man. I'm, I'm obsessed with expanding my mind, elevating my mind to a, a higher learning. And I'm really uh, fascinated with how the brain works. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So that's been a big thing for me this year. But really... Uh, I just learned to, this year it taught me to, like, sometimes you got to reinvent yourself. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, uh, in a book I was reading, it, it was saying we're always wrong. You know what I mean? Mm. Like, I don't know, chasing a goal, you always certain on how to get there. And then, say, for instance, trying to lose weight. You know what I mean? Oh, I'm going to lose weight by uh, cutting out carbs in my diet. And then, a month go by, they still the same weight, or they might have lost. They, they go weight was to lose fifteen pounds, and then lost like three. Uh -huh. And they was, but they was so certain that cutting out carbs right. was gonna help them lose weight. So it's all about like not being so certain all the time. Like it's all about trial and error. And then once you learn that what you thought was the right way was the wrong way, then try something new. Mm -hmm. So for me, I had, this is my fourth year having tap athletics. And I had my struggles like crazy. You know what I mean? For, when I mean struggle, just trying to like be big time, go viral with every post. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And when I first started out, I was just trying to be, you know, another Bleacher Report, a house of highlights, another ESPN Sports Center, a page where you come to, come, can come to and learn who won last night's game. Uh, who dropped, you know, the greatest highlights, all the stats. I wanted to be a place like that. But the thing I was wrong about was thinking that that was going to be a successful formula to blow up and have viral videos and then have people interested in, in what I'm trying to present. Right. Because, and that the reason why it's wrong is because it already happened before. Somebody already did it. Mm -hmm. And not only that, the field kind of got saturated. And I should have, I should have seen that from the beginning. But I was just so certain in my head that that was going to pop off. And then for three years, I'm just like, man, why am I only getting 12 likes on this? Why am I only getting five likes on this? How come I just spent all this time editing this video and only get five, five views? Ooh, you know what I mean? I feel your pain. And so I was like, bro, I don't even want to do this no more. And then when I first came here, or towards really the end, like when I first, in the last year, 2021, when I went to Luxembourg, I said, you know what? I'm tired of posting highlights and stats and the latest basketball NBA news because it just seemed to me like my audience don't care for that. Right. And I noticed that when I post something personal, it will get way more likes than my NBA highlights, news, and all that stuff. So, you know what? I'm like, you know what? If I try to post more personal stuff, and this was around the time where I got more serious on TikTok and I started understanding how TikTok works with all the trends and all that stuff. I was like, you know what? Let me hop on a few of these trends. 
and that was really uncomfortable me uncomfortable for me to do some of the trends like you know, trying to be funny with it and try to do all the facial gestures. I ain't with all that. Like, you know what I mean? I ain't with all that. But I'm just like, man, if it's going to put me in a position where I want to be, then I'm going to do it. Right. So, like I said, you got to fail to get where you at because I fail miserably. Like, a lot of times I look back, like, ooh, that was real cringe. Like, oh, you know what I mean? But I learned it. And then once I learned it and I finally got my first good video and I feel comfortable about it, I posted it on my IG and I got a good response. And I was like, oh, these people want to see me. And so going back to, like I said, you got to reinvent yourself. You know what I mean? Times is going, they changing all the time. Yes. Time and technology is moving quickly. If you can't keep up, you're going to get left behind. So I was like, all right, no more NBA videos, no more of that. Just straight me. And since then, I've grown like 4,000 followers in just this year. Man. You know what I mean? And like things are just starting to look up just because I changed it up a little bit. And I think a lot of people be so so stubborn to just get out of their box because they worried about what other people say or they worried about um, how they feel after growing and changing. And even though they know it's, it'll be for the positive, they just worry. They just, there's so many people trapped inside their mind. You know what I mean? Right. But if you break out their box and change it up just a little bit and learn and tweak things, then I think that's the key to success. You know what I mean? Like hundred percent, bro. I hundred percent agree. Yeah, I would say that's what that two taught me, bro. That's that's what's up, bro. I a hundred percent agree with you on that. And that's kind of like that for a third yeah. agreement, you know, because you know you made an assumption. You thought this is what it's gonna be <laughs> to make you get to where it was at. And it turns out it, it, that wasn't what it is. And you like you said you started just Showing you, there's only one deuce deuce in this world. There's exactly. only one Rashad Hassan, you know, and that's who people exactly. want to see. That's what people want to hear. That's what they want. They want the Rashad Hassan, you know. They don't want another bitch. I, I, I didn't realize, like, not even just myself, but us people, people in general, everyone is so relatable to somebody. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like you said, we relate to the average hoopers. Don't get wrong. I don't think we're average, but we didn't go to the NBA. Mm -hmm. We didn't play in high-level Euro League. We didn't play over in, like, Turkey or Spain, ACB League or, you know, something like that. But we still we still worthy. We still good. But, you know what I mean? There's a lane for that. Right. There's a lot of people who are right. not in the NBA. There's a lot of people who, who are diehard basketball fans that have never played professional basketball overseas. Very but true. we still relate to them. You yeah. know what I mean? So it's like... You got to embrace your journey. You got to be proud of who you are. Right. And then just be true to yourself because it's somebody out there for somebody. Bro. You're absolutely right, bro. It's definitely a length of that. And I feel like we are, we are more of the majority than the minority because when it comes to this lane of basketball, like I said, bro, you got to think about those top teams and all that. There are not a lot of players that are playing in those leagues that you think that's just what – Bleacher Report and, uh, and Sports Center, that what they show you of the overseas. That's not the real. That's not real, bro. I'm telling you, please don't believe that. Tap in with us. Tap in with Tap Athletics. We'll really, really tell you what it's really like if you really want to play this game and really understand what's really going on in <coughs> day to day life. Like this day to day life of language barrier adjusting. It's so. This is what's the this is what's real life is really about. This is what it's really about, you know. I'm in a hotel room. I, I got to deal with living in a small environment until they change my situation, you know. I got to worry about currency exchange when I get my money, changing my money and losing so much. I lost so much money from my currency exchange this time. <clears throat> But I need the money to get transferred to my bank account because I got bills I got to get paid. So I got to make a choice. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Or exactly. if I keep all the money on me, now I'm going to probably have situations when I go in the airport because you're going to have a certain amount of money on you when you're traveling. This is the real life of what you really got to go through these type of decisions. Right. Yeah, bro. It's been a good year. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, man. Nah, you, you're definitely right on that. And, uh, yeah, 2022 overall has been a good one. So, 
Uh, I'm just trying to take everything I learned from this year and definitely reinvent myself and then apply more pressure in 2023. Like you said, it's crazy. We only two weeks away. Two weeks, bro. And we got to do it big. But, yeah, uh, the last question i pop off for tonight, man. Like I said, it's been, been a, a pleasure talking to you, my boy, for life. Uh, recently, when you seen Brittany Griner, I think it happened earlier this week, maybe Monday. She uh, got released from prison in Russia. I give her a little hand clap for that. You know what I mean? We got one of ours back. We got one of ours back. You know what I mean? And now she's back home in the States. What's your thoughts on uh, Brittany Griner making it back home and having to go through all that craziness over in Russia? You know, I actually commented on somebody's post talking about the situation, and a lot of people kind of, like, wrote back to me and wanted to, like, get me feedback. And my whole response was, listen, I'm so happy that she got back home, but she need to understand, like, the position that she put herself in. No one is above the law in the countries that they're in. That just comes back to being able to adjust. You can't go over there. Yeah, you go to most states in the country, in America, it, we legalize. Canada. If that's what you want to do, it's fine. But go to the place where that is tolerable and that is acceptable. Don't try to take into your own account, well, I'm Brittany Griner and I'm a WNBA star, this, that, the third, and I'm going to go to Russia and just do what I want to do. And now you're in this situation. Because I don't think that the punishment was justified, but I can't take away the punishment that was well because that's the law over there. You know what I'm saying? It is what it is. I can't, we can't just, who are we? If there is no laws, then we're just, then it's back to the wild, wild west <coughs> and everybody doing whatever they is. It's got to be some kind of bottom line to all of this. You know, it's just, I take everything in life as a learning lesson. I know she learned her lesson because I'm telling you now, there's situations where there's people who ain't got the whole world backing them. All right? Thanks. I've been in China where dude got set up in a bar fight and been in, in a Chinese jail for four years. And ain't nobody know mm -hmm. his name. Ain't nobody fighting for him. You hear me? So, yeah, with well, her situation, I'm glad she back. I'm glad she had that situation, you know. Shout out to everybody that supported her. But understand, just learn from this. Don't, don't take it for granted. <laughs> you know, do not take it granted. Don't make assumptions. Thinking you could just get by on all these, like, let's be more mindful, you know. Let's just be more mindful and understand what we're doing. You know, just that's, that's it. Just let's be a little bit more mindful. Especially, I made a video the other day, you know, about weed, you know. And we know, I, I speak first on it. I love the weed, too. I used to love the weed, too. I recently stopped, but I used to be loving the weed. But I'm putting, I got to accept the consequences that come with it. In Argentina... In Chile, Colombia, all the countries I play, they drug test. So if I get caught and I get kicked off a team, or if I get caught driving and I'm smoking and I go to jail, hey, that's a decision I got to live with. Because I made that decision to do that thing. All right? So can't be mad at nobody. Can't be mad at nobody. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Just be self-aware and just accept what it is. That's all I got to say on that situation. Nah, I I agree with you 100% on that. And the biggest thing, like you said, I hope she learned from it. Because it's one thing to go through that process, but if you come home and still try to smuggle, you know, <laughs> uh, cannabis oil to another country, then what was the whole point? You know what I mean? Like, it's a fail, it's a fail process. So I think, you know, Whatever she went through over there, it seemed like it was a horrific experience. And I, and like you said, I, I definitely know she didn't assume any of this no. would ever happen to her. Mm -mm. So it just shows you, like, anybody can get got, you know what I'm saying? Not just with even Brittany Griner. It's just like, you see with these rappers, man, rest in peace to take off. But, man. you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't even know the full detail, but he was just there. And now he gone. You know what I mean? And like your privileges, your life, it could be taken away from you so quickly. Man. And you think about 
Brenda Griner is a once in a generational lifetime talent. And she could have been really over there for nine years. Her sentence was for nine years, bro. Got and a, yeah. You don't meet too many six, eight women who could dunk and play in the post like she can and play basketball like she can. That's a gift. And she almost threw it away. So, like you said, bro, I really hope she she learned from it because, man, she got a, a great second chance. And also, I want her to use her fame and celebrity to help other people out. Like you said, you had a boy in China, been in years, been locked up for four years. Four years, There's bro. plenty other Americans overseas in messed up situations and who can't get out. You know what I mean? And, like, I'm happy Brittany Griner is home, but it's got to be equal for everybody. So I really hope Brittany Griner be a leader and take charge and try to help out everybody else that's in a situation like her because – you know, it's one thing that she's free now, but she had a lot of help. She Man. had the WNBA. Right. She had the NBA. She had the NFL. She had a lot of big names. The president. Her out. The president. So it's time for her to be like, all right, I appreciate y'all. Now I need y'all support and helping other people out as well because it can't just be like celebrities to get a free pass from everything. You know what I mean? That's not, that's not fair. That's not right. So, yeah, welcome home, um, Brittany Grinder. Um, I have you. You you got through that whole process. And really, man, you know, I you know I understand. Like you said, it's their law. You gotta be smarter than that. Yeah, bro. But the whole the whole nine year sentence was outrageous to me and beyond crazy. And the time she served from the time she went in to be released, I think that's a, a adequate time yeah. for her to learn her lesson. And you know what I mean? They gotta make a you statement. Know, they it, gotta do something. Yeah. They gotta do something. I, I, I totally understand. It's a criminal offense, but nine years was way too extreme. So I'm glad she learned a lesson. I'm glad well, I ain't no telling she learned a lesson or not, but I hope she learns a lesson and You think yeah, about man. that, you think about her, she got a nine year sentence. The guy that I was talking about in China, he was in four years and he ain't even went to sentencing yet. You see what I'm saying? He didn't even make it to sentencing yet. And he was four years in. And just a just a little yeah. quick tip for everybody who don't know, China's conviction rate is 99.9%. So if you get caught on a crime, you're 99.9% .9 got a chance of being convicted. 0.1% of getting of being innocent. That is not so you're you're convicted. And you're listen. Dude, like you said, I hope that she becomes <coughs> an advocate for other people in her situation and like reach out and help because it ain't man, that's it, it's a heartbreaking thing. And hey, welcome home. Welcome home. I'm glad we got somebody who got it back. Welcome home, BG. Welcome home, Brittany Brown. But yeah, man, I appreciate you joining me on the Tap Show. This is also the Arnold's Thoughts Podcast, man. We're going to be teaming up more podcasts in the future, man. Plenty good time. talking to you, my brother. Yeah, man, it's always good. And, uh, we definitely going to chop it up some more. Uh, keep killing over in Argentina. You know what I mean? I got a game this Sunday. We're going to take care of business, so you know, keep leveling up, my brother. I'm proud of you. Let's keep showing them what Savannah State products Prada. do to people when they try to try to step to us on the basketball court. You know what I mean? Hey, Shannon, he's gonna have to move over. He gonna have to put something next exactly. to him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm about to say, man, you you a goat for sure, but you got some 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 more goats coming up. Big you facts. Know, you know, trying to put on Savannah State too. But yeah, man. Uh, before we go. Tell them about your book and where to get it. Six must-have traits to become an overseas basketball player. You can go inside the link in my IG bio. Just click the link. It'll take you straight to the book, man. If you know anybody that wants to play, if you playing, this is for everybody. They pick up that book, bro. It's just going to help you and guide you with all the things we talk about. Just You can never go wrong with more information. Trust me, and we've been doing this for a while, and we can definitely help you out in any in just the little things that you might overlook. Like I, I'm telling you, there's a lot of things that you just overlooked in this game. That 
six must have traits to become an overseas basketball player. Go pick that up, man. Right. Right. And then before we leave, tell them all your social media handles, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, all that. You can find me on IG, TikTok, Facebook, YouTube. Apple Music or Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts at Arnold's Thoughts Podcast. It's a single for all that, man. Arnold's Thoughts Podcast. You can go find me on all that. Tune into all our episodes. Check out everything. You can find me there. For sure. And y'all do the same. Tap Athletics 22 for Instagram. Tap Athletics 22 for TikTok. Tap Athletics too for Facebook and just Tap Athletics for YouTube, man. Appreciate all the support this year. Um, man, almost at 50K on TikTok, almost at 15K on YouTube. Bro. Woo! Big time. Like I said, bro. Man, it, it, was, man. it was looking dark. My you didn't came a long way, dog. You didn't came a long bro. way, bro. <laughs> <laughs> this year I gave you more than life, bro. It, boy, it, I'd be this like, year, man. I'd be like, man, I can't. I don't yeah. know, bro. I'd be thinking, dang, I got to post again, but not to think about you. And I'd be like, nah, I got to keep going. If my boy kept going, I got to keep going. So just let you know, bro, you give hope. Keep to going. Bro. Yeah, bro. For sure. Just keep going. The, the, the pain of getting them low-level likes <laughs> It's only gonna it's gonna make you stronger. The pain of us having two people in this live right now, Arnold, is gonna make us stronger. Cause guess what? We keep going. Next year is gonna be fifteen people in this live. Right. We keep going. Next year is gonna be a hundred people in this live. We keep going. It's gonna be five thousand people in this live. So <laughs> you gotta keep going, bro. Keep it's that going. simple, bro. Keep going. Big fast, bro. One hundred. But yeah, bro, I love you, bro. It's been a fun podcast. I love you too, man. Always, bro. We're going to chop it up. Till next time, bro. Peace.